Getting to this point in time really has been quite a journey. Ever since the really early days of early access KSP, I remember seeing a lot of folks building custom game controllers for the game to truly immerse them in the space simulation, and I've always wanted one, but my electronics and programming skills are pretty limited, so I just stuck with keyboard and mouse. However, last year, I came across Codapop, who posted some pictures on the KSP subreddit showing his fully modular Kerbal controller system. He has a website where you can go and design your own controllers using a simple drag and drop system, and so I decided to go all out and assemble the ultimate controller. I settled on a double unit setup, the main controller board for operating my spacecraft and a secondary unit for camera and EVA controls. Codapop sent over some B-roll for me, showing the construction process of my controller, and yes, these are all completely custom Arduino units with custom acrylic housing available in several different colours. It was then all packaged up and sent all the way from Taiwan to the sunny shores of England where I set to work assembling it. Here's a little time lapse of me putting it all together. It was super easy really, basically a giant Lego set, and honestly, loads of fun as well. I'd say it took me about an afternoon to put it all together, it really didn't take very long at all. Setup was a breeze, it really was just plug in and play. I had to download a mod called KSP Simpit that allows Arduino devices to talk to Kerbal Space Program, but that was a fairly trivial mod to install. And then it was time to launch, and yeah, it was great. Hitting a physical button to launch the rocket, I know you know, the space bar is a physical button, but you guys know what I mean. And I was very tempted to uh, try out that launch abort button where you've got to lift the flap up. We've got to turn a key, lift the flap and press it to execute a launch abort. So yeah, I had to try that. We're now going to simulate a launch abort, I think. So why not? So we've activated the key, open it up. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Go read it now for you. Let's uh, zoom in. Let's go on EVA actually. Okay, then um, jump. Look, there's his mono propeller. Like by firing his jet, look, the little thing goes down. Don't know if you can see. Uh, turn on his lights. Zoom in a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about the controller a little bit more. What modules did I go for? Well, starting with the quick one, the yellow controller, there are two panels. The EVA panel, which has all of your standard stuff like board, grab, jump, etc. As well as a cool monopropellant gauge that actually pulls the data from the game to show you how much monopropellant you have left, which is pretty cool. And although there's no dedicated personal parachute button, you can activate it by hitting jump and light at the same time. The camera panel should be fairly self-explanatory. All those buttons control the camera. All right, let's move on to the main controller. I'm just gonna move this out of the way. Oh my goodness, it's my plushie. You've only got like less than two weeks left, guys, before it goes off sale forever. So just putting this little thing in the video to say, buy the plushie. Come in, come in, come in. <laughs> I want to throw this at you. <laughs> Please let me throw this at you. It's for a video. Oh God, it's for my YouTube. It's my YouTube video. It's my YouTube video. This this is going in the advert. No, it's not. Yes, it is. It's going in the advert. It's not. It is going in the advert. It's, it's such a. Thing. <laughs> I really like it. Uh, you not. It's not going to be available for very much longer. And then literally, there's never. They're never going to be able to. We're never going to be able to do this again. Uh, so this is now your, your final, your, one of your final warnings. 
Uh, buy it, but actually, I, it's great. It's fun. It's cheap as well. It's only $29.99 uh, US dollars. And yeah, look at him go. He's fly. He flies through space. Look, now he's flying. Now he's now he's flying past a pile of chicken nuggets. Really, the the, 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 op, the the adventures you could have are limitless with the plush, with the in in, in thrust we pl in plush we thrust we trust plush limited copyright TM. Okay, so on to the main controller. We first off have buttons for a total of 20 different action groups. Unfortunately, there's no button for the lights action group, but this can be fairly easily addressed by just adding lights to a numbered group manually. Or in my case, I simply requested Codapop to change some of the code so that action group 20 was the lights button. My favorite panel, just because of its ridiculousness, is the executive actions panel. This will not work until unlocked with a key, and it has the two buttons that you really don't want to press by accident. They are stage and the one you really, really don't want to press by mistake, abort, which is protected by a plastic shield. This triggers the abort action group, as the name suggests. We then have the analog control panels, the two big joysticks. The left stick is basically WASD. You use this to steer your rockets and that's, that's it actually. <laughs> it can also be twisted for roll control, serving the same function as Q and E. We also have an analog throttle gauge, as well as a throttle kill switch. The right hand joystick is the translation stick. It won't be as heavily used, but it is still very important. While the left stick takes the role of WASD, the right stick takes control of IJKL, aka the controls for things like RCS. It also controls the wheels when in rover mode, meaning that wheel steering and SAS rotation are no longer linked together, making designing and operating rovers much simpler. Then we have the SAS panel. This has your SAS and RCS toggle switches satisfying clicks there, and your various auto SAS hold buttons. The final two panels are the time and navigation panels. Time is just time warp control with an up and down toggle switch and a reset button. The button is illuminated whenever time warp is underway and it turns off when time warp is disabled. The panel also has the quick save and quick load keys as well. Last up is the navigation panel. This has two chonky switches, one that toggles the nav ball and one that switches to and from the map screen. I'm not sure how well this shows up on camera, but these switches have lights inside them whenever they're activated, which is a nice touch. So that's my overview of the controllers. So how do they compare to a keyboard? Well, it's certainly a lot more fun and definitely a lot more immersive. In terms of if they're objectively superior, I mean, the keyboard is probably better in terms of raw functionality and precise ship control, though bear in mind that this is coming from the perspective of someone with thousands of hours in KSP with a keyboard and less than five hours with a controller. However, objective superiority really is not the point of these sorts of things. You don't buy this to win KSP MLG, whatever that would look like. You buy it because these things are just really fun to use. And in that regard, it's a 10 out of 10. It's a lot of fun performing missions with these things to the point where I'm just enjoying simple LKO and back missions because of the new challenge of using the joysticks and just the different experience that these controllers offer. It's really difficult to put into words how satisfying it is to use these, which is a shame since that's my job with this video, but I'm hoping that the reasoning is obvious. And they are super customizable as well. The panels snap in and out with magnets so that you can change the layout to whatever suits you best, and if you want to swap any modules out for different ones, then that's pretty trivial to do so as well. Of course, we should probably talk about the price. These are not a mass-produced joystick created for a variety of high-selling games. This is a hand-built bespoke controller for one very specific niche game, and it's built to order. Given that what you buy is entirely up to you, the price is going to vary, and there is a catalogue available on Codapop's subreddit, linked below, that shows some of the pricing for various different setups, as well as some of the individual panels. But this is a luxury product, and the price does reflect that. In case you're curious, the total cost of my purchase, and yes, I did buy this with my own money, these two controllers came to a total cost of 980 US dollars, plus an extra 90 US dollar customs fee when it arrived in the United Kingdom. That number is going to vary depending on your country though. Would I recommend this controller? Well, I mean, you already know if you want one of these. It's not exactly a consumer product, so I don't think a recommendation is really what the video needs to end on. But I've been having a ton of fun with mine. I'm really looking forward to mastering the joystick controls. At present, I don't think KSP2 is really supported just yet, but of course that may well change in the future. 
Until then, I'm going to carry on enjoying Kerbal Space Program 1 with these things. This controller is just ridiculous. I love it. Thank you so much, Codapop, for building it for me. And I'm hopefully going to try and make more KSP videos of me using the controller. Maybe doing like a live stream or something. I don't know what the future holds just yet for the controllers. But it's going to be fun either way. I also now need to give a massive thanks to my Patreon supporters and my YouTube channel members who help make ridiculous videos like this possible. Their names are listed on screen. If you want to see your name listed with them, then you can join either scheme using the buttons below. There should also now be two other video suggestions on screen for my channel that YouTube thinks you'll like. Hopefully they're good choices for you. And yes, that is the end of the video. Um, that's it. I, don't know, I haven't really thought about what I'm going to do for Saturday's video just yet, but I will hopefully think of something. <laughs> that's it. That's how I'm ending the video.